Hi everyone, this is Good Morning Games, and this is Jason. Hello, this is Alex. And today we are going to talk about new Pokemon Snap, which just came out on Friday. We're going to talk about our first impressions a little bit. We're going to talk about the Miitopia demo that was released a little bit, and then we're going to go into another topic of some other games that we would like to see ported from the 3DS and up So to really start it off, let's talk about new Pokemon Snap. What do you think? Uh, I think this game rules, to be honest. Uh, <laughs> if you liked the original N64 Pokemon Snap, you're going to love this one. It is just more of the same with like all the updates you would expect uh, and some of the non-updates you would also expect, I guess. Um, still, still an on-rails uh, photography game. <laughs> um, there's over 200 Pokemon to take photo- photos of. You earn expedition points to raise your research level as you progress through the game. Uh, there are uh, an, there's an objective to take one through four star ranked photos of each Pokemon, and I thought that was kind of a clever way to make the game longer. I think some people feel that's like a cheap way to make the game longer. I don't. I, I thought it was kind of cool though. It gives you incentive to to go back. So it's like. As soon as you start the game, you see a Pichu, you don't just take one photo and it's like, oh, I never have to deal with Pichu again. It's like, mm-hmm. it gives you incentive to go back and take other photos of it and stuff. And yeah. uh, I'll just stop there. What do you, what do you got? Well, yeah, uh, to, just to kind of start, I think that, um, so uh, I've seen a lot of people like not, uh, so specifically we commented on some poll uh, regarding if you're going to buy Pokemon, new Pokemon Snap or not. And it was like overwhelmingly no. Oh, yeah. That and, was on a spawn wave pool. Yeah. And so I think that that would be kind of somewhere that's good to start because I think people, maybe that, you know, the first one came out 22 years ago. And if I hadn't ever played that, I was a kid when that came out and it was awesome. I mean, yeah. I, that was, I was the exact perfect age for when that came out. So um, obviously we have a nostalgia, but. I think I could kind of see how if you had no nostalgia and all you heard about this game is like it's an on rails thing where you take pictures and that's it. Yeah, I can I can see why people maybe don't aren't interested, but I think that they're just absolutely miss, they're just like missing. I don't know. I don't, they're missing out on what it is. I, I don't I don't I don't know. I don't know the best way to explain it, but it's just there's so much replayability. And that was the one thing that I was worried about with this one. And I've we've talked about that before is I was worried if there would be that same replayability in the first one, because in the first one, I think it felt like there was so much replayability because there really was only like five stages and you were done really yeah. quick. And so you wanted to get everything done. But this one, it, to me, it feels just as replayable. I mean, like, so both of us haven't played that long. I think you're farther than me. I've really only played like the first two stages and I'm not even yep. like, but um, I played that first one. I'm not even done. And I've played it like 15 times at least. Yeah. I'm with you. I'm, I'm at the night jungle stage. Yeah. So, and that sounds like two, but really that's five stages. Cause you've got the day night and then Illuma version, whatever yeah. of the, the first level. And then you got day and night of the second level. So even those two tracks, it is vastly different uh, when you choose between night and day mode and then like the boss level or whatever you want to call it, like the the glow in the the glow in the dark light up (laughs) boss Pokemon photography stage. (laughs) 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 Yeah, um, I I'm not I've played each of those levels. Like over a dozen times each, I'd say, and I'm not sick of either of them, so. Like you mentioned the how they have that the, your research level, and so to kind of go into what that is a little bit more is when you take pictures of Pokemon, it's mm-hmm. it's giving you points at the end of the stage based on a, a bunch of different characteristics, and all those points get added up, and you you'll raise a level on that particular stage, and each time you get a higher level, it's a few things. So for one. Pokemon, if you go from a level one at the jungle stage to a level two, now they're doing different things. They're interacting a little bit differently than they would before. I've heard that they're usually, that means they're more comfortable with you. So they come up closer to you. And then also, 
it, it opens new paths as well. So it's not the exact same because I remember on that first stage after I played it, maybe, uh, you know, six or seven times, there was that announcement where it's like, oh, they fixed the dam. Now yeah. you can like go over the dam and the, the next time, Yeah, yeah. And now the <laughs> next time I did it, you took a different path and went over that dam. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I don't know. That's really cool. It, it, it's in the levels are short enough that it's fine to replay it. You know, that, that that's mm-hmm. kind of, and that's something that they did in the first one too. It's like a good, it's like a good length where, you know, if each level took 10 minutes, you're like, man, I don't want to do that whole thing again, but they're short. So it's just like, oh, yeah, I'll do it again. He'll check out something different this time. Yeah. Uh, Returnal just came out and people are like, you, can, you have to play for 90 minutes before you can yeah. take a break. Uh-huh. This is like four, four minutes. I haven't timed it, but it's not long at all. It's like a few mm-hmm. minutes. And yeah, I have no problem. Uh, uh, replaying these levels it's it's a pretty quick painless thing i think one time i was like maybe i should just end end it early i don't even know if you can because i haven't tried i don't know i don't know I, if you I, can just i don't i don't think you can i mean maybe that you can but i i was thinking about that too and i couldn't figure it out so <laughs> yeah in either way it's not not that big of a deal but yeah uh what you were saying about like the the beaver pokemon the bidoofs uh building mm-hmm. the the dam that stuff is really cool um I also found out uh, just like a few minutes ago, there's a Pidgeot in the beginning of one of the levels. And Mm -hmm. if you feed it, then you'll see it again later in the level. And if you feed it again, then he'll block your path at the very end of the level. And like Mm -hmm. stuff like that, you're not going to find on your first playthrough. Yeah. And it's like, I was like, oh shit, this is awesome. (laughs) Like (laughs) it blocked my path and like walked straight up to the, uh, the Rover thing. And like, I got a four star photo of it. Yeah, uh, you know what? I think I actually got that too, but I didn't realize that that's why I did it. I think yeah. I, I was just chucking food. Yeah, just throw, time, so throwing I apples do it intentionally. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. It's a fu- it's a fun game. I really like yeah. it. Yeah, I also really like the. Um, I really like those requests. So yep. it's like the they'll request for you to take a certain type of photo and that's the exact type of stuff that i was hoping for with this where there's little like tasks and missions for you to go back and do it again it gives me a purpose to go back um so yeah like i was having a hard time even go- going to the second stage because i wanted to do every single task that i was getting yeah. before i went to the second <laughs> one so just playing it over and over and over and it wasn't like in a bad way i wasn't getting bored at all but um yeah i know it's just like wanting to complete everything and then moving on uh, yeah and that's that's gonna be hard to do in this game i feel like mm-hmm um there is some uh oh sorry go ahead i I was just gonna say uh you mentioned it but also uh yeah you can play there's like three different ways and with day and night i'm pretty sure almost if not all the pokemon are different yeah yeah i've noticed that um maybe they're in different spots or there's new or different pokemon there but yeah that's it's it's really different playing between day and night it's it's pretty cool Mm mm-hmm um, and one one new thing they've added is the Illumina Orb, I think it's called the light up glow thing. You could throw it at Pokemon, and then they like glow different colors. It's it's kind of neat, and uh, um, you could scan things, which I think the scan is pretty cool. Um, I don't really get how yeah, I don't <laughs> you you can scan to activate things in like there's a some charred fruit hanging under a tree. You scan it. And then it says, I don't think this was burned by fire. Can you find out which Pikachu did this? And it's like, I still haven't found the, the mm-hmm. damn Pikachu <laughs> yeah, that yeah, did yeah. it. Uh, but it just gives you little things like that. And then there was one, one area where there's like a, a mound of dirt on the ground and you scan it and then a pincer comes yeah. out of it. And I'm yeah. like, how the hell did a digital scan just activate yeah. a Pokemon coming out of the ground? Yeah. So they they did say that. I remember at the beginning, he said something like, "Some Pokemon will react to the noise of your scanner." So I oh, did he that, say that? Oh, they yeah. covered it. They covered yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's not great, but that's that's what I'm assuming. All right. Yeah. Anytime it made it enough, it, it like did an effect i was like oh i guess that's the noise of it but i was thinking the same thing i was like i don't like must have missed that (laughs) i don't fully get the scanner but i bet it'll come in handy at some point i just haven't got there yet yeah yeah it's it's yeah i'm glad it's there i mean they like the aluminum ball the scanner the fruit like there's different options to to um 
like interact with their environment and stuff. This was a, I think this was the first game ever where I was like, I wonder if I can add motion controls. <laughs> oh, in the, uh, in, <laughs> you're like, saying it, this one or when you, the original? No, this one. I'm, this is, uh, I think this is the first game I've ever wanted to it. add motion controls. Yeah, yeah. And then I, you can, like I hit start and, and checked out the menu and I used them one time and I was like, oh, these kind of suck. And I immediately went back to the, <laughs> the sticks. But now, I, uh, now that you say that, I didn't even, uh, I've only, I just realized I've only played it in um, handheld mode. And so okay. that automatically has gyro. So like if you move the oh. switch, it, it does it. I didn't even I, I didn't even notice that. I haven't played it handheld yet. Yeah. I've um, been using the pro controller. But um off of that kind of um not really, but just like <laughs> well, I was just gonna say <laughs> smooth segue. The, <laughs> yeah, I was just gonna say <laughs> plug it into the TV. The graphics look incredible. Like, it looks really it, good. Yeah. I, I and I think that um obviously there are tons of great looking games, but I think that we're so used to Pokemon games not being that graphically great so that this just looks by far, I think this looks by far the best. Pokemon it looks game. a lot better than uh sword and shield. <laughs> yeah. Just like the character models. And I think it's cool that, um, I think it's cool that there's a little bit more of a story, I guess, than the first one. Like the first one was, it's not like there's this huge story, but the first one was like, Professor Oak was like, here, here's a camera. It's a, it's a huge world to explore. Yeah. And then you're just like going and taking pictures. This at least like, oh, like you're becoming There's part of this research, research lab. team. Yeah. And then like, yeah. And you have like uh, allies and like a guy who, what, rival. Yeah. Um, so I thought that was cool. Um, yeah, I thought it was a good, a good setup for, for a game that could be really shallow. They, they did a good job. And this voice acting, which I was surprised. Not like everything, but there is a lot. They so when I when I turned the game on and it said like select your voice language I pressed English and I was like what there's voice acting in this game mm -hmm. and then like the next couple sentences uh, I think the professor just said like yes but then there was a whole sentence of like yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <clears throat> but then uh, but then later he gets uh, <clears throat> he gets uh, he like start reading a lot more and I was like oh shit there is actually a little bit of a voice acting in this game like more than I, not a lot but more than I thought there would be. Mm -hmm. Also, just like a heads up for anyone, th this was a game that made me realize how many Pokemon games I have missed because there's a lot of Pokemon I did not recognize. <laughs> for sure. Um, <laughs> like, yeah, just so if anyone's listening, we're, we're not like hardcore. Um, I like Pokemon, but uh, there's definitely a bunch of generations I have missed out on. And there was like so many Pokemon. I'm like, well, I don't have never seen this thing before. Yeah, I'm with you. I definitely missed a few. and in between uh well yeah in between gold and like sun and moon i think yeah. or, or maybe i don't know i played a few in between there but definitely not all of them there is an online component to this game mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh and again <laughs> this this is one of those additions that like could have could have been so much better but this is nintendo's approach to using online there is, a, once again, literally a button that says internet that you have to click on, and then you <laughs> then it connects, connects to the internet, and then you're in internet mode for this, for this Pokemon game. I didn't, um, even, I didn't even do, try that. All right, so it's, it, it's not bad. It, just, it doesn't take long to connect. You don't have to go through like lines of text like an Animal Crossing or anything like that, but you do have to press a button that says internet, and then once you do that, you can... Uh, you can upload your own photos for people to see. You can click on other people's photos and see like trending photos. Uh, you could see a featured course that I think just changes daily. And then you could see recommended photos or whatever. You could see your rank for your total photo deck score. I'm currently 118,000th. Wow. So I'm racing up the chart. And uh, it, I, it's fine. It's a cool little component, but... I really wish Nintendo would just be more accepting of online <laughs> capabilities yeah. of games. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty, uh, that's pretty nuts that you have to like go in and make yourself connect. I don't know. Yeah, but I don't know. I, I, with, at this point, it's to be expected. Yeah, but uh, if, anyone, if anyone is listening that doesn't get 
doesn't understand the hype or whatever. I don't know. I I think it's worth a shot. I I th- really think it is. I think there's definitely gonna be people who it just doesn't really click with them. But listen, if someone told me and I had never seen anything about this, and they just said this is a game where it's an on rails and you take pictures. I probably wouldn't be interested, but there's just so much more to it, and it feels so much more of a full experience in a full game. So I, I definitely think it's worth trying out if you're like on the fence. I agree. It's it's a lot more fun than it sounds. <laughs> it's yeah, the best yeah. way to put it. Like, yeah, you try to tell somebody about it, and it's like that sounds dumb and lame. Why do I want to do that? <laughs> why, why do I want to pay sixty dollars to take pictures of Pokemon? Uh, but I don't know. The the gameplay is fun. And I think I just read this in uh, Iwata's book that came out a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I think that's where I read it. And uh, he, they developed the uh, like the, the game mechanic of being on rails and like taking photos in first person mode. They developed that mechanic for a game before knowing it was going to be Pokemon Snap. Oh, and wow. then Iwata's like recommended like i think this game needs to be pokemon like this has to be a pokemon game and that's that's awesome yeah so that i mean the gameplay mechanic is a lot of fun and obviously nintendo had a lot of faith in it uh because they just you know developed that first it wasn't like let's go make a pokemon photo game (laughs) yeah and and again something that just hasn't been anyone who's played the first one will know this but we just haven't really talked about it you have all you have these different items and different ways of interacting with these pokemon and you can kind of lure them to do what you want. And then that interacts with something else that then changes something in the atmosphere. And then you get a picture that you wouldn't have been able to get without working towards it. So there's like a lot of almost like secrets that you're it's, you kind of are going through and trying to find different ways to interact that then affect the world, I guess. Yeah. That makes sense. So it's cool. Yeah. Uh, Any other thoughts on the game? Um, I do like the, your space area it's basically a menu but it's kind of cool like you can just go to this area of the menu it's your space and you look at your album you can change your icon like your player icon you almost have like a mini profile in this game change your taglines um and then look at your research log like that kind of stuff that's what i'm kind of referring to when i say this game has good updates that you would expect uh for a 2021 game like yeah it's it's really fleshed out with that type of stuff um but yeah i i would highly recommend this game i'm gonna keep playing it it's a good one yeah and we may i don't know we can talk we might talk about this again once we're done with it or we do a review or something like that um we're both like we said we're both pretty early internet so i can't really talk about everything because i know that there's way more that i haven't experienced yeah um so then we can just kind of quickly hop into we both played the metopia demo just a little bit just to kind of try it out um (laughs) yeah and yeah i mean i I don't have much to say i i knew what it was and i you know I, i wasn't expecting a ton but i am not that interested and i like rpgs um but it seems like it's such a such a baby rpg (laughs) that it it doesn't really interest me like i i don't know i just like i got like you get into you create your character and then when you're getting into a battle there's just like a couple you know it's like hit or run away you know like it's like use an item there's not like any depth to it which it's not like it looks like a game where there would be a ton of depth yeah that's what people like especially like turn-based rpgs that, like I love turn-based RPGs, but I like them because there's a lot of thought that has to go into it. And when it's your turn, you have to think, oh man, if, do I need to use this buff? If I don't, I might die. Should I use this magic? Or you know, And it just doesn't, I mean, I haven't played a ton, but I don't see this going that direction. It seems like it's kind of a yeah. hit hit or don't or block or you know hit, hit. The, the menu just says hit or don't hit <laughs> yeah so uh, yeah, I, I haven't played very much i played maybe 30 minutes of it but i think i'm done i, I don't I, yeah and I'm, and, I'm, and I'm not planning on getting it <laughs> um all right yeah i i agree with a lot of what you said and this game people say like origami king for instance that game has great writing and good visuals and good music 
but the combat's not very good. That's even more true here, except the writing isn't as good and the yeah. graphics aren't as good. <laughs> but yeah, 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 the combat's really shallow, unbelievably shallow. I think the graphics are like really silly and kind of fun. Like when your me runs across the screen, it made me laugh. Like just mm -hmm. like the animations and stuff. Uh, the music's pretty goofy. Um, so it definitely has its own style going on. Um, when you create your character, you can choose between a warrior, a mage, a cleric, a thief. It's like those are all regular <clears throat> sort of RPG classes, but then you also have pop star or chef. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. So it's like that kind of weird goofiness thrown in. And like right now, my partner in the game is a, a chef that looks like Mario. He's in my party. So hmm. I have Chef Mario. Um, there's an evil wizard that steals all the Mii's faces in the world and you have to go <laughs> defeat enemies. And when you defeat an enemy, the face flies off and goes back to its owner. Like, it's really mm -hmm. stupid. It's it's so dumb. <laughs> you can choose... A, the one thing, one thing about this game is you can choose the faces for all the characters in the game and you could uh, use Mii's that are on your system. So, like if you you want your sibling or friend or whoever partner to to be in the game you could upload their me to be a main character in the game you can also download the most popular faces and every time i chose that for some reason joker from batman was like <laughs> up on the top menu of yeah, like yeah, top yeah. selections <laughs> like people love making the joker me i guess so that's kind of weird. Um, but yeah, I could not imagine spending $50 on this game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's never going to happen. <laughs> yeah. And then I like went and created, it has you like create the, the Dark Lord, I think is what it is. Stan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So mine was Lee. Oh. Um, <laughs> so I had Dark Lord <laughs> Lee and I had a huge handlebar mustache and it just, it just, it, it just looked hideous. Man, I don't know why mine was named Stan. I think I just went with the default, but... Anyways, um, so, was after we... we you got anything else you want to say? <laughs> no, I don't think so. Okay, so the reason we kind of talked about that and um, wanted to bring it up at least, obviously... And I, actually, there is one thing I want to say about it. I don't think... We're kind of being a little harsh on it, but I don't think it's meant to be, like... It's meant to be a light game, for you know it's not supposed to be taken too seriously so like i know i'm like kind of bashing it it's like it's not enough of an rpg but i don't really think it's meant to be it's meant to be like a more fun probably kids family game that has rpg elements so it, it, it's just more so not for us we're both like in our 30s so it yeah. probably <laughs> makes sense that it's not for us um if i was nine or ten i'd probably love this game to yeah be for sure for sure so just be aware of that that yeah. it, it's um it might be good for kids um, but we kind of wanted to talk about that because so this was originally a 3DS game that Grezzo went in and upscale completely. And um, so we kind of wanted to talk about maybe some other 3DS games that would be cool to see uh, get upscaled. And I, I don't I know that there was some things added to this. I know you've talked about it before. It wasn't anything major. It was like they added horses or like something like that. But yeah, there, there wasn't a ton that was added. So. I'm more so thinking about games that they don't need to add anything to if they just uh, upscaled it and then put it on the switch for 40 or 50 bucks. Yeah. Um, I'm just surprised there hasn't been more of that. So um, yeah, we, we have, we have a list of some, um, I can just kick it off with one with two that it's like, we've talked about a million times. So I might as well just say, um, I, I was going to say, I bet we have the same top two or three. Yeah. I mean, so <laughs> just knock it out of the way. I think, Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask 3D both came out, and those were mm -hmm. both upscaled to the 3DS. The remakes were done by Grezzo, so considering they just upscaled Metopia, it can't. It, it might not be too difficult for them to upscale uh, Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask. So if there's no full-on remakes of those, I think that'd be really cool to see an upscaled version of those. Um, yep. Totally agree. Those have to be done. Yeah. <laughs> have to be done. We don't need to talk about those too much because yeah. every we talk about that in every video. It's true. Um so I guess not the same same token. I got uh Legend of Zelda Link Between Worlds. That mm -hmm. one's gotta, <laughs> gotta gotta make its way over. Yeah. That one, I mean, I feel we haven't really talked about that, but I yeah, that would be awesome on the Switch. Have I, you played that game? 
Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's really I, good. Yeah, it's really good. Um, it's one of the better 2D games. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. I played it a lot. I played it a while ago. I've only played it once. I played it all the way through kind of like, I think maybe right when it came out, and I really, really liked it. I remember the going into the walls and stuff, or being a painting was, was really cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if they brought that over, charge 40, 50 bucks, I'd buy it day one. I don't, yeah. I don't think anyone's surprised. Anyone who's been listening to this podcast probably isn't surprised by that. But um, yeah, it's just an awesome game. And I, Nintendo loves to make money. So that, that would be a good way for them to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, then another one, uh, another one that we have talked about again, Samus Returns. Um, yeah, that was what I had next as well. <laughs> uh, yeah, and so we've said kind of, I think that there is a t- new 2D coming, but I'm a little, I just am surprised that this never came, I, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. We, t- we covered that last week. It probably won't ever come to the Switch at this point because we think that Mercury yeah. Steam is probably working on its, on an original 2D Metroid for the Switch. Unless they went back after that, but I don't, I mean, it seems like the window probably is closed at that point because the mm-hmm. sales probably wouldn't be great if there's an original 2D Metroid on Switch, but it, you know, doesn't mean we don't want it. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, and I would love to see, uh, this is actually, this started on GBA, but I would love to see Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga plus Bowser's Minions. Mm-hmm. that they released on 3ds i think in 2017 um so it's not that old but if they brought they brought all those mario and luigi games to the switch um they're really good great writing fun combat like throw them all together in one collection charge 1600 dollars. I'll, I'll buy it <laughs> yeah, <laughs> whatever yeah. they want to charge <laughs> and they had uh the same with uh mario and luigi uh bowser's inside story um yeah. like yeah i, I I'd be good to see those. Oh, the other one was uh, Mario and Luigi Paper Jam. That was oh, a 3DS yeah, yeah, yeah. title. That would yep. be cool to see that come over. Yeah, and those were... So I, I actually never really played those. Um, and for, but from what I understand, those were more like... At some point after... Um, really after Paper Mario Thousand Year Door, they kind of... From what I understand they kind of made the Mario and Luigi series be the more like RPG series. And then Paper Mario became more of like an adventure series where it was less about RPG. Um, (laughs) So yeah, but I'd like to see those. Um, Another one I have is uh, I've never really played. I dabbled, but I I played the demos of the original um, Bravely Default. And I thought that was really good, and that was on the 3DS. And then I just played Bravely Default 2, and it was awesome. Had a really great time, um, and I really liked that game. And I'm, so I was just looking it up, and it had pre- it looks like it had pretty decent sales. I don't have all the numbers, but it, it says Bravely De- Default 2 reportedly outsold Bravely Default. So I don't know. I, I think it'd be cool if they just could up-res that and just re- you know release it for cheaper on the uh, Switch. I'd buy it at least, and I'm sure people who bought the second one would buy the first. I don't know. I think there's a lot of JRPGs on the DS and 3DS that are kind of stuck on that platform. Yeah. I don't play a ton of those games, uh, but I know I've read that like the, the amount of those kind of games on that platform, uh, there's a lot of them. So yeah, I, th- I feel like a lot of people would be happy if they made, it, made their way over to Switch. Yeah. And I, I'm, I'll just say one more because you said that uh, the, uh, another game that I've never played is... Um, Dragon Dragon Quest Eight, which is like that's like the from what I understand that's the most popular Dragon Quest game. It was on like PS2. It was like it was the biggest one, and um they made a they made a version for of that years later on the 3DS. Like they just randomly made Dragon Quest Eight for 3DS. Nice and um yeah and and I really wanted to play it because everyone says that's the best one. But it's like, I, I don't know, I just don't, like a big game like that, I, I don't really want to play on the 3DS, but if I had it on Switch and it was like a little bit cleaner, I definitely would. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I haven't played any of those, but I, I mean, who knows? Might, might give it a shot. Um, I had a couple other ones. One, it's so stupid that it's not on the Switch, is Donkey Kong Country Returns. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tropical Freeze is on there. Just put the other one on there. Why not? 
uh, Kid Icarus Uprising. Yep. I don't I know that. how stylus intense that game is. I think it's a lot. Have you played yeah. it? I have not. I have not played it, but I've I've heard only good things. Yeah. Yeah. It's supposed to be a really good game. Um, I don't. Yeah. Like I said, I don't know how how much of the touchscreen it uses because I've never played it. But you know, would love to see a Kid Icar- Icarus game on Switch. Uh, Zelda Triforce Heroes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's not. A, it's not a great game, but this is just on a personal level. I have more friends with a Switch than ever had a 3DS. So um, yeah, this game would be more fun now than it was when it came out six that, years ago or that whatever. That is true. Definitely true. Um, yeah, and especially like the snappiness of the Switch. So that was another issue with 3DS, and or, like d- I always felt like. I feel like me and you sometimes would try to play Triforce Heroes or like uh, Luigi's Mansion, the online multiplayer. Mm-hmm. And I just, it wasn't as snappy. Like you always had to like, I don't know, you had to load in and then wait for your two 3DSs to connect. And I don't know. I, I feel like the Switch would be so nice if you just be like, hey, text space. Hey, you want to play? And you can be in within a couple minutes. Um, I, I would have played Triforce Heroes more than if I had it on the Switch. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, last, did you have another one? Yeah, I have, uh, so I have, they, they remade Star Fox 64, uh, yeah. for the 3DS, and so, so Star Fox 64 3D, and if they're not coming out with the Star Fox game anytime here soon, let's get that one. <laughs> just, just keep, get, keep re-releasing <laughs> yeah, Star Fox get, 64. <laughs> let's get the best one yeah. put it on the Switch. Yeah, I'd definitely be okay with that. Um. The the other one that I had, I've never played any of these games, but they've always intrigued me, is the Professor Layton series. They look fun. The art style is really cool. The music's cool. I've watched a few videos. Just put some of those on the Switch. (laughs) Yeah, I have not either. I've never played any of those, and I've heard many good things, um, which at first I didn't think I would be into, but now that I keep hearing people talk about it, I feel like for years now I've heard people mention it. Yeah. If one came out, I would get it. I I at least try it out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know. I don't think they did they release one on Switch? I don't they may have released like a spin-off, but I don't think any of the mainline Professor Layton games. But um they just they always looked fun and I never never bought one. Yeah, it doesn't look like it. Um Yeah, a sp- it looks like there's a spin-off. A spin-off. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, get some of those going. Yeah. Uh, what else do I have? I have um, the only. I have two other ones. I have uh, WarioWare Gold. I would like, yep. a war- uh, but I mean, <laughs> I think that they'll they'll end up making a WarioWare game. They have to with the Joy-Con. Yeah, I think they will. Um, and the final one I have is the. We've talked about the Fire Emblem Fates, where it was two different mm-hmm. ones, and we talked about that because we have heard that they are remaking some sort of Fire Emblem uh for the switch and i think that was the one that people were talking about i don't know but that'd be cool too yeah last one i'll say uh just came to my mind is super mario 3d land Mm -hmm. i think that's a different different game from 3d world and i've never played 3d land so just uh came out 10 years ago i at this point i'm not gonna buy it (laughs) on my 3ds but if it came out on switch i would buy it so Mm -hmm. Nintendo, you could sound, you could clip that. <laughs> if if it came out on Switch, I would buy it. Just clip yeah. that and use that in, in all your in, in like in your marketing because <laughs> yeah. I think that's true for everybody yeah, for any for any game. <laughs> yeah, um, uh, yeah, and I, that was that's a good one to bring up because when we knew that um, Super Mario 3D World was probably going to be coming to the Switch, I remember a lot of people thinking that. Uh, they had been adding bonus to any ports they were porting over, and I remember people saying like, "Oh, I bet that the I bet that this port will have Super Mario 3D Land um, mm. instead of." And they ended up having Bowser's Fury, which I'm sure is better. But yeah. Uh, yeah. but I remember people suspecting that, so I would agree that'd be cool. I never played it either. Yeah, just put every 3DS game on the Switch. Yeah, Come on. Well, actually, just put everything <laughs> on it <laughs> from every system. Every system. <laughs> That's all I had for the the three d s yeah, that's all I have. um you playing anything else other than new Pokemon Snap? I'm playing new Pokemon Snap, and I am playing Twilight Princess on my Wii U, 
and I was really cruising on it. I was playing it every night for like hours and I got yeah. I'm like I'm like three fourths of the way done. And now I've been like slowing down, which I don't want to do. I, it's, I'm like pissed <laughs> off that I'm gotta, doing that. You got to power through. <laughs> yeah, it's like I just want to beat it. But I've, I'm like 35 or like 30 hours in or wow. something. So it's like it's like, I don't know. I really, really want to finish it. But it's also I don't have my Wii U like plugged in. I, it doesn't fit anywhere nicely. So anytime I want to play it, I have to like. It unplug up. it and plug it back in and it's just just the, it's the littlest effort but it's just enough to make me be like uh maybe i'll just play yeah. pokemon snap <laughs> but what if it if it comes out on switch are you gonna start it over no so that's the thing <laughs> no i will not because i've already that's the thing that's why i need to finish it because if i stop right now when it comes out on switch i'll be like I didn't finish it, so I got to start all over, and I'll yeah. end up replaying the whole thing. And I don't want to do that. I would rather just finish it on my Wii U. So I probably have like ten hours left. I, if I play an hour a day, come on, I got to do it. Yeah, you, at this point, you really got to finish it on Wii U, yeah. and then again on Switch when it comes out in like three months. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I, I really wanted to. Uh, yeah, like I've said, I'm trying to play all the Zeldas uh, for sure, all the 3D ones, and. I I was choosing between I'm either going to play Wind Waker HD or Twilight Princess HD on my Wii U and then when they're re-released on Switch I'll play the other one and I'm just bigger I'm a bigger fan of Wind Waker so yeah, I was yeah. saving I'm saving that one for the Switch. Yeah. That's a good call. How about you? Playing anything? Uh I was just playing the Resident Evil 8 demo oh, on yeah. my PS5. That game so I did, I I didn't play much of 7. I don't love six. I played the hell out of four and five and I played the two remake. Didn't play the three remake. This, this one is so good. I know you said you, you didn't love it. Um, because you thought it was like giving you the spins or whatever. Yeah, it when wasn't you played even it. that I didn't love it. I just, for some reason I got dizzy when I was playing it. I don't know why it could, it could honestly just have been like that day. I was yeah. like sick or something. I like, you know, I, yeah. I liked it. I, I had fun with the demo. I haven't played the new demo though. It's so good. Uh, you could play it now. Um, we're recording this May second, so yeah. Anytime between now and I think May seventh or whatever. But it is just the right amount of mix between four and seven. It's terrifying as hell. Like I just started the castle uh, demo. You start out in a room and you can like collect a few little things if you look around. There's nobody in there. It's got weird lighting, uh, so you can, like, at certain angles, you can see your shadow, which for some reason is just, like, that alone is scary. And then, mm. like, you go in another room, and um, there's no way out of that room. Just weird, goofy shit on the walls, and, like, um, it's this really old, creepy castle. Couldn't find my way out, and then I noticed the fireplace had a gate on it. I opened the fireplace gate, and then it's like, you have to crawl through this pitch black tunnel like mm -hmm. <laughs> on your stomach like into another room it's just it's perfect resident evil like perfect mix of action and horror um i i can't decide if it's too scary to play i'll probably just get it <laughs> i'll probably it just day. get it yeah i'll just get it play it during the day yeah. um but yeah i've been i've been messing around with that and then uh like you i've, I've been playing another zelda game uh i played I got, I was really going on Oracle of Seasons. I'm about three quarters of the way through on that again and just stopped. Um, but I really want to finish that one. Yeah, got to power through. Got to power it too. through. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's it. New Pokemon Snap, Resident Evil 8, <laughs> Oracle of Seasons. <laughs> good, good mix. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, this is kind of off topic, but talking about Resident Evil, um, my girlfriend got me the oculus quest for uh christmas and i was playing it a ton for like a month and then i kind of stopped and i i saw that they're gonna re-release um resident evil 4 for the oculus yeah. and, I, and i watched like the they did a kind of like a presentation on it the other last week and it looks awesome so it sounds like a really sweet way to replay it um they're really really redoing it i mean it's like completely all the way down to like if you have a shotgun you got to pump it with your hands and like oh really yeah they're they're adding it a ton so 
it look and it doesn't i mean it doesn't look like it, it's obviously the same game but they're making it a really good vr experience so I, I i the reason i i got an oculus and i was really excited about it and it is really fun the problem is that there's not enough games that are like story or like adv- like adventure just in that store I, I think like probably the psvr has more like that but like yeah. oculus quest most of them are like you know like little almost sports games or like there's a climbing like rock climbing games and stuff like that and I, that just isn't especially when they're 30 or 40 bucks like i don't know i'm just kind of like I, i'll probably play this a couple times and then i'm yeah. like so but so i'm, I'm excited i'm definitely going to get res- the resident evil 4 uh, it looks that, great yeah so it's kind of off topic but whatever yeah oh you know what i've also been playing the show on game pass oh i have not been playing that yet i haven't even tried it yet but i want to do that it's sick if you yeah. if you like baseball if you like any aspect of baseball yeah <laughs> like I'm not, I'm not even a huge baseball fan but i know i'll like <laughs> yeah I'll know I'll it's like fun it. it's really easy to get sucked into yeah. um so yeah i got that going too sweet well uh thank you guys for listening um if you're watching this on youtube make sure to like and subscribe uh follow us um on twitter at gm games podcast and if you have any questions email us at good morning games podcast at gmail.com um yeah you can send us questions or um just ideas that of things you want us to talk about and um we'll definitely listen to you so uh thanks so much for listening and we will catch you next week we'll see ya See ya.